Second Finance Minister Johari Abdul Ghani says no charges have been made in Malaysia with regards to the 1MDB scandal because the authorities still don't have the full picture. He explains that even the PAC and the Attorney General were unable to specifically tell what went wrong when it came to the money transfer and the other details. Johari was commenting on the convictions and bans slapped on ex-bankers linked to the fiasco in Singapore. He says that the actions taken there were due to governance offences, which had happened in Singapore and not in Malaysia. Also, because of the ongoing arbitration with IPIC, he says any action taken at this point in time would weaken Malaysia's position. Johari says there's no question of wanting to take action, but the government doesn't run on emotional strategies, so it must be really sure on what it wants to do. EcoWorld Development Group is already close to hitting the 1 billion ringgit mark in sales in the first four months of FY17. The 955 million ringgit sales figure is about 57% higher compared with the 607.8 million ringgit made in the same period in 2016. In a statement today, the group said 797 million ringgit came from projects in the Klang Valley, while the remaining 158 million ringgit was from projects in Johor and Penang. The higher sales number were the result of its mega launches in the final quarter of FY16, as well as the launch of its final prison Grandeza in Eco Century last month. The increase in sales helped boost its top and bottom line for its first quarter. Net profit came in more than four times higher at 116.2 million ringgit, though that was boosted by a 94.8 million ringgit gain from its change of interest in Paragon Pinnacle. Revenue rose by almost 28% to 592.7 million ringgit. This year, the company's ultimate sales target is 4 billion ringgit. Going forward, EcoWorld is targeting three launches in the second half of 2017, including the launch of EcoHorizon in Penang. Ahead of its April 3rd listing, EcoWorld International says first quarter net loss shrank on unrealized forex gains as the British pound appreciated. Net loss improved from 57.8 million ringgit to about 6.1 million. Revenue led by over 300 times to 327,000 ringgit on the back of marketing services fees for its London City Island Phase 2 and Wardian London projects. Meanwhile, sales came up to 6.5 billion ringgit, the bulk of which came from its projects in the UK. EcoWorld International says revenue and profits associated with its property development activities will be recognised when the construction of the relevant units are completed and delivered starting the first half of 2018. Barring any unforeseen circumstances, the group believes that post-listing, it is in a good position to build on the early success achieved by all its existing projects in the UK and Australia. Top Glove's second quarter earnings took a hit from higher raw material prices. Profit came in at over 83 million ringgit, a 20.6% drop compared with last year's 104.6 million ringgit. Revenue, however, was higher by 22.7% at 851.5 million ringgit. In a statement, Top Glove pointed out that in the second quarter, average latex prices had surged to a five year high, rising 33% quarter on quarter to 5 ringgit and 95 cents per kg and 72% year on year. Meanwhile, the average price for nitrile also shot up to 1.08 USD per kg, up 10% compared with Q1 and 12% from the previous corresponding quarter. This sharp rise in raw material prices also drove up average selling prices. But Group Chairman Lim Wee Chai said the company had performed well despite the challenging business environment. He attributed this to good control over internal factors, including quality and cost efficiency. Going forward, Top Glove is expecting more intense competition on a larger scale. As for raw material prices, Top Glove predicts that it will stabilise at current levels or possibly be on a downward trend. Hong had a bumper quarter with net profit jumping more than two folds. On the back of higher revenue and operating income, earnings came in at 6.1 million ringgit, up 243.1% compared to 1.77 million ringgit last year. Revenue stood at 226.3 million ringgit, up 11% from over 203 million ringgit a year ago. The stellar performance was driven by an increase in demand for gold jewellery and gold investment products, higher retail gold prices, and additional 
additional revenue from new outlets. No dividend was declared for the second quarter. For the first half of FY17, the group reaped net profit of 7.8 million ringgit, up 272.4%, while revenue climbed 9.6% to over 411.8 million ringgit from a year earlier. Moving forward, the group said it will continue to review, revise and consolidate its business strategies to meet current market challenges. Pokong is also optimistic on maintaining growth and its leading position in Malaysia, despite more challenging and competitive conditions in the domestic jewellery market.